Hello and welcome to First Lady with Meghna Pant, an exclusive show on First Post where we bring you India's foremost leaders, thinkers and activists. I'm sitting with somebody who's touted for her brains as much as she is for her beauty. She's regarded as a fashion icon as well as an opinion maker. She's also considered avant-garde, but at the same time, she's also managed to maintain a pretty traditional family life. She's a contradiction as much as she's a celebration. So Shobha, thank you so much for joining us here today. My pleasure. It's such an honor, such a privilege and I'm thank so you. excited. What do you make of the above introduction? Do you agree with it? Uh, do you think that, you know, as, as somebody who's uh, a creative person, you're famous, you're successful, you're an artist, do you think there'll always be a dichotomy between your public life and your public image but who you are as a person, there's always like this sort of contrast. But I have no problem with dichotomies. I, mean, I have no problem with contradictions. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's easy to compartmentalize anybody, not just myself. Right. And I don't think you to put yourself out there all the time and tell the world, hey, you know what, this is who I am. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I think your work speaks for you. Uh, my family is perfectly aware of the work I do and they're perfectly aware of the person I am. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, it begins and ends with that. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah. But you know, you've, you've been a best-selling novelist for almost three decades now. But if you look at four decades now, yes. that's very impressive because if you look at, you know, even publishing literature, there's a certain kind of masculinization. If you look at the best-selling authors in India, they're all men, right? Chetan Bhagat, Amish yes. Tripathi, Dojoy Datta. In the US, it's the same story. You've yeah. got Dan Brown, James Patterson, Jeffrey Archer. So how did you manage to sort of, you know, break through this male elect? How did you break this boys club? Because you have your own imprint as well. You can't, you can't plan these things, you can't yeah. manipulate these things. And let's yeah. face it, uh, a J.K. Rowling's happens once in a century. True. And she can take the pants off all the men. <laughs> she does. So, I mean, we wait <laughs> yeah. for that great magic moment. Yeah. But it isn't possible. You have yeah. to do the best you can. And you should never, ever be uh, obsessive about um, sales and about uh, yeah. beating men. You have to be yeah. true to yourself. Yeah. You to write the books that you want to write and hope yeah. and hope that a lot of readers will like them, appreciate yeah. them and buy them. That's excellent. But you're not, you're not new to breaking glass ceilings, are you? Because I mean, throughout your life, right, whether it's sex, to do with sexism or ageism yes. or whatever it is, you have worked through sheer grit, through sheer hard work and single-minded focus. So do you sometimes look back at all that of that and identify yourself as a feminist? The word feminist has connotations which I'm not entirely comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, it also has a political agenda which is uh, driven by the West, yeah. which again I don't subscribe to. Okay. I think our brand of feminism has to be culturally in context with who we are and uh, what we want for ourselves. Yeah. About glass ceilings and shattering through stereotypes, Again, I have never recognized that glass ceiling to start with. So yes. the question of shattering through it to me is a non-question because if I don't uh, believe in its existence, yeah. I just do what I have to do, what I enjoy doing. Yeah. And uh, uh, there are thousands and thousands of women like myself who do it perhaps without uh, any public acclaim, right. but they're doing it regardless and they've been doing it for years. And in a society like ours, uh, those are my heroes because uh, what are their rewards? Yeah. Very few. That's true. So for me, it's really very often my brand of, if you want to call it feminism, yeah. is to kind of represent the voiceless women mm. of our country yeah. who I admire greatly. You meet them all the time and you think to yourself that uh, just look at their lives and look at the life of privilege that someone like yourself, someone like me, yeah. people in media, Absolutely. people who have uh, a presence in the public domain, I think uh, we need to recognize how small we are in that context. Absolutely. That's so well put, so succinctly put also. I remember reading an article in a Mumbai Daily very recently about feminism and he capped off the article by saying that all it all really requires is if you even help out a single woman who's actually in need of help. Yes. And I thought that was put so well, so beautifully and very beautifully crafted. But there's also a section of society where, you know, you face a lot of flack for your tweets on, say, Sushma Swaraj or Sonam Kapoor. When you look back at that, do you feel like it's your role as a social commentator versus a feminist or you just being an honest writer? So when people attack you for feminism, when you, you know, you uh, speak out against women or say anything, why is it always taken under the wrong light? 
That has never concerned me. It's not a yeah. preoccupation for me. It may be for the trolls and you know, yes. good luck to them because I ignore them consistently. That must <laughs> drive them insane because the whole idea of trolling is to get a, a reaction, reaction exactly. and to provoke the person which, mm. well, try someone else, not me. Right. Uh, I don't even look at men and women in that sense. I don't compartmentalize. I'm quite gender neutral. Okay. So that may make me a bad feminist because I don't think it's important to stand up only and only and only for women. I think mm -hmm. uh, I would stand up for a man, I would stand up for the underdog, period. Absolutely. If I feel uh, critical about another person in the public space, be it an actress or our external affairs minister, mm -hmm. I thought her handling of that particular issue, I admire her. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think she's terrific. Um, I think she jumped the gun a bit. Okay. And uh, just because she's a woman doesn't mean she's going to be spared. I mean, she'll get it the same way as I would have. I wouldn't think of her gender at that point. I'd just think of her position yeah. and whether what she said was in her own interest and in the interest okay. of the country at large. Yeah, very well put again. You know, that's exactly the right attitude to have and I'm glad you have that. But do you think sometimes your honesty is then uh, mistaken? Do you think you're misunderstood many times because of it? I'm not one of those who cries, oh, I'm a victim, I'm a martyr, oh my yeah. God, don't misunderstand me. Yeah. Uh, what I say, I stand by. Okay. I'm not there to convert the world. I'm there to express mm -hmm. myself. Right. And if that uh, somehow triggers a response in someone else, yeah. that is not positive towards me, mm -hmm. it is really, the onus for that is not mine. That's excellent. <laughs> How will you sh uh, shine your mirror unless you polish it, right? Rumi had said that, which were beautiful words again. Uh, you know, I look at you and I see your intense courage, I see a lot of determination, a lot of sort of self-conviction, ambition. And I really wonder how that fire was kind of stoked in you. And I'm sure it came at a very early age. So did you have a mentor, a role model, an influential parent, a guru maybe, I don't know, anybody who sort of stoked that fire? No, I think, uh, I think in all honesty, it's always, I've been very fortunate, very lucky that there have been people who have invested a lot of faith in me and they've seen qualities perhaps within me mm. which I've never recognized for myself. So when you use that word ambition, uh, yeah. ambitious, yeah. I'm somewhat confused because that's not how I see myself at all. Okay. It's always someone else's ambition for, uh, you. for me. Okay. Uh, and I've always taken that with, uh, with a sort of sporting spirit. Yeah. That if that person thinks I can do it, maybe I should give it a shot. So it isn't with any target, any goal okay. at all. It's not to seek any rewards and awards. I mean, I'm well beyond any of that. Okay. You have to do what you do with immense passion and a Absolutely. sense of commitment and a sense of drive. And that's what keeps you vibrantly alive. And that's what keeps me going. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, when a door opens, you're also seizing that opportunity and then walking through it for which yeah. you deserve all of this. Uh, you know, you seem to have rocked every decade with aplomb. I've been reading so much about you, what you were doing in your 20s, 30s and, you know, after yes. that as well. You're headed into 70 next year and yes. I'm sure you're going to show us all how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you planning to rock the next decade? Uh, well, uh, 70s, uh, you know, for me, oh, every decade has uh, yes. just been a number that people have reminded me about. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's see, I'd say mm. the say a seventh decade yeah. is normally a time for reflection, and okay. you, but not mm. for me. No, I hope not. I'm looking okay. ahead. I'm looking <laughs> at how I can make the most of it and what I can do. Then there's lots to look forward to. And how I, exciting. And I hope to keep writing and writing and, yeah. and tweeting. Excellent. I'm sure. And my last question before we head into our pop quiz is, how different do you think your life would have been if you were a man? It would be dull and boring. <laughs> yeah, I don't okay. particularly fancy men's lives that much. Hmm. I find them a little one-dimensional most of the time because the roles are all written for them mm. and because the challenges especially in a society like ours where men are uh, born privileged just by being born male mm. I think it sort of spoils them for choice and they don't push themselves hard enough uh, well as mm. women it's a wonderful struggle I don't call it negative at all mm. it gets the best out of us at least uh, that's how I see it Mm. So the more the challenges are, the more people underestimate you, mm. uh, the more I feel we tap into ourselves to say, hey, uh, you know what, you're yeah. so wrong and I can do it. 
So that yeah. has always been a driving force for me. So no, I wouldn't want to be a man. <laughs> Not even in my next seven lives. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> so I'm going to head into my pop quiz. Why do all your book titles start with the letter S? Because the word superstition starts with an S and so does my name. Uh, what is the toughest role you've essayed, mother, wife or writer? The most uh, demanding, I would say, yeah. is mother. Now, as a mother, when you read about the horrific incidents and crimes against women, especially in our country, do you worry about your daughter? Constantly. Yeah. Constantly. Yeah. And I feel that uh, if in this day and age we're still mm -hmm. at a point where we have to worry mm -hmm. when our uh, young daughters, our children, our mm -hmm. grandchildren, our da daughters-in-law, sisters, a any woman in, at any age mm -hmm. steps out of her home, yes. then there's something that we need to be concerned about. And I hope that things do change. We are drastically in need of it actually as a country. Um, you know, labels and name calling, even dharnas, you've kind of faced it all. Uh, do they do criticism, do critics, do they flow off your back, you know, uh, like water? Do you sometimes uh, feel that you're determining your actions and words because of them? Call me a duck if you like, <laughs> because yeah. it has never concerned me. Okay. I do what I have to do, I say mm. what I have to say, I do what I need to do. That's good to know. You know, uh, at, on my wedding day, my mother had gifted me a book, Spouse, and I remember reading it and I loved it. It's one of my yeah. favorite books Thank of you. yours. Yeah. Uh, what came out to me was, you know, that your husband's been a big support system Huge. in your life. Yeah, he's, yes. you know, unlike most, especially Indian men, unfortunately, yeah. and their egos, he's let you thrive, he's let you, you know, do your thing, which is amazing. Do you think that the most important decision that a woman takes, you know, looking back even at your own personal experiences, do you feel whom she marries is of the most important decision that a woman takes? If I may just uh, put one thing into context, you yeah. use the word he has let you. Yeah. I have a problem with the let you because yeah. that already suggests a level of control. That's true. Whereas I think yeah. uh, a good relationship is based on complete trust and equality. Definitely. And so that has never been um, mm. from an issue in my marriage. Yeah. It's been both of us growing together and having a lot of fun in the, in the process. How different do you think women of your generation were from what you're seeing women today achieve? Well, today's girls, I love their spirit. I like yeah. the fact that uh, uh, nothing stops them from mm. achieving what they wish to achieve. Okay. They pay a price for it. So mm. sometimes that concerns me, whether it's in terms of their relationships, stress, mm. um, early heart attacks, all kinds of stuff. Mm. But that's a global phenomenon. So why should our so, girls be any different? Uh, do you have any female role models? Or model? I liked, uh, liked, hmm. I have to say, um, it's not my, uh, she's not no longer the hero that she once was for me, okay. uh, Aung San Suu Kyi. I think yeah. uh, her last few months or last couple of years have hmm. been a bit of a disappointment. Hmm. But uh, definitely for the longest time, uh, she was one woman who I thought was hmm. courageous and beautiful and gracious, yeah. well spoken. Uh, intelligent, sensitive. Mm. She was like a steel orchid or steel magnolia or whatever you want to call it. Mm. And she had all the various qualities, so mm. many combined qualities mm. that I respected. I still respect her, yeah. but it's just been eroded a little bit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, you've achieved so much and I, whenever I think of you, I imagine that you work really, really hard. You're very, very disciplined. And imagine you wake up at four in the morning, you know, before the <laughs> cocks come out to crow. I don't know if that's true. But what does your average day look like? My average day is pretty hectic. Okay. But I'm not an early riser. I mean, yeah. before nine o'clock in the morning, it yeah. doesn't exist. It's midnight. <laughs> but I sleep okay. late. I read okay. late. Mm. I don't write late. I read a lot because that's okay. a very quiet, wonderful time where you can absorb a lot. Last question. Do you still want your epitaph to read, I did it my way? Well, Frank Sinatra has grabbed that space and that <laughs> line. It's too associated with him. I'll yeah. have to think of a new one. I haven't yet thought of it. Yeah. Uh, don't stop the music. I liked. Mm. I liked the idea of, uh, uh, you know, people dancing at my funeral a mm. lot. Okay. Uh, to music that I have pre-selected. Mm. Okay. And uh, I'd like it to be a wonderful with a lot of champagne and a lot of <laughs> fabulous flowers and. Uh, Everyone comes and they dance and they give me the send off of my life. You know, this was so much fun for me. My God, you're even more beautiful, even more impressive in person if that were even <laughs> possible. You. And Thank you know, I you. love the fact that you embody the first generation of women, I think, who showed us that 
a woman doesn't need anyone or anything she can do it on her own steam and you're so ahead of your time so thank, thank you, you so much you know never thought of it like that i just thought i had all my support system around <laughs> me without whom i would collapse so if you're saying yeah. that to me i'll Absolutely. go and tell my family i don't need you you know i've done it on my own let's see how they react <laughs> your daughters and sons will not be happy but no it's really really an honor to have thank spoken you. to you thank, thank you, you so, so much. much for coming Thanks. here